Hey guys, my name is Reno. Welcome to Living at Pixels. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can deliver a website like a professional. What do you do when you're done designing and building the whole website inside of WordPress? Let's just get started. Okay, so I've divided this video into eight steps that I think that you should follow if you deliver a website. So I hope that you will learn a lot of new things. All right, let's just get started with step number one, and that is create a custom login experience. I've been getting this question a lot lately, and that is how do you customize the login experience? So for example, when you log in, that you see a logo on the left over here, and also when you log out or when somebody logs in, that you can see your logo or your client's logo in here. So let's just go and let me show you how that is done. Uh, the plugin that we're gonna use for this is called White Label CMS. So what you need to do, go to plugins. I'm gonna switch to my client website to actually show you a real example. All right, it's this one. Okay, so now the plugin is installed and then you can go to settings and then it's over here, white label CMS. So you need to set up your logo at, in two places. First of all, you can skip this part and then you can go to login and here you can set up your login logo. So that's the logo that you see when you log out. So I'm gonna click on upload over here. Uh, my client already has a logo. You can pick a black version over here. That is perfect when you don't add a background. But if you wanna add a background, then then a white version is better. So let me show you what a background looks like. You can also set up a background. So this is my client website um, where I've set up a background and a logo. And of course, if you have a, a background, then the background needs to be a little bit darker. So you need to adjust that in XD or in Photoshop and then uh, also upload a white logo. So now we're gonna upload uh, the logo that we see right here for this website, which is just gonna be this black version because I'm not gonna set up a background over here, but I will show you where that is. If you scroll down, you can see that you can also upload a background image in here and make sure that the black overlay uh, like I have over here is applied already to the image and then of course also use a white image uh, if you want a custom background like this. For now I'm just gonna click save and see what happens. So click save then log out and here you can see the logo. So now every time you log in you will see the logo. So now over here you will need a white version of the logo and that is something that you can set up under branding over here so if you scroll down the admin bar that's this bar and then if you scroll down the side menu that is this menu so if you upload a logo right here so here we need a white version and we click on insert and we click on save you will see what happens uh, that it's absolutely massive <laughs> so what you can do what i did on my own website is uh, create a logo but then add a little bit of white space on the right in your png image so i will show you what i mean here i made a custom png with a little bit of white space if you don't know how to do that you can easily do that in most creative tools but i always do that in photoshop uh, so just add a little bit of white space over here in your PNG and then it will look like this. And otherwise it will look like this. It's not super ugly, but with some logos you wanna make it a little bit smaller to make it look clean. All right, step number two, install Google Analytics. So if you go to my dashboard over here, you can see the page views that this website has. So you can see that uh, my website is actually doing pretty well, my own portfolio, that I have received 138 visitors yesterday. Uh, so you can see a little graph over here. So this is super nice and I will show you how to set this up. So you will need Google Analytics for this. I've already installed it on this website. So I'm gonna do that right now on a new website. What you wanna do is go to analytics.google.com, create an account with your Gmail, and then you can create a account over here so how you do that is you just go to the admin panel over here and then you can create a new account so for every new website you create a new account with google analytics so if you uh, click on create a new account uh, right now i want to create an account for my subdomain testing at renewable.com so i'm going to copy the url going to go back to google analytics first you're going to give it a name so that doesn't need to be the link you can just do it like this or name it whatever you want. Then you can click on next web, that's perfect. Click on next, my website name, that can be the same, the URL, just paste it over here, but make sure you don't uh, add the HTTPS. 
delete that and select it over here like this. So if your website already has a SSL, then you can select this one. You can select an industry over here, uh, maybe business and industrial markets, that's perfect. The time zone, I will put that on your own country. So for me, that's the Netherlands. Click on create. Here, select your own country again and make sure that you agree to the terms. All right, and now you are done. Now this account is created and now you can connect this Google Analytics account to your WordPress website so that WordPress can send the data to Google Analytics and then you can see all the data in Google Analytics and you can see a preview over here in your own website. So let's just do that right now. I'm going to go back to my website and the plugin that I'm going to install is called Exact Metrics. So just search for Google Analytics and then if you scroll down you can see exact metrics over here. It has a low rating, but this was the best Google Analytics plugin before they updated it. I still think it's pretty good, but they've made a lot of features pro. But if I want to see all the data of Google Analytics, I just go to analytics.google.com to see everything. So for me, this works. I know a lot of people didn't like the new update, uh, but I think it's still a decent plugin. You can also install something like this, but that's a little bit too heavy for me, a little bit too much for just on my website. I just want to have a quick preview also for my clients how much visitors this month so that is what i'm going to install right now okay and now you can click on launch the resort because we need to connect this to our website and here you need to connect it to google analytics so this needs to be the same email as you use on analytics.google.com for me that's my personal email so i'm going to click on this and then allow exact metrics to see my data. And then here we need to select the website that we uh, want to connect because I have a lot of website connected to that one Gmail account. So inside of my Google Analytics, I can go to the analytics of different websites. So here we need to select the right website. Okay, so just select all website data and then click on complete connection. So then if you scroll down, there's one thing that you need to check and that is that the editor role is over here because you want to create an account for your client in most cases that has the editor role. So you need to make sure that you see the editor over here. Just click on save and continue. We don't need this. So just right click, skip this step and then uh, we are done will ask you a hundred times if you want to upgrade to pro but we don't want to upgrade to pro we just want this thing on our dashboard so if you click on your dashboard right now and you scroll down you can see that the tab is over here so if you close this one and then bring this one to the top then you will always see the page stats over here so that is actually all i want and then if i want to see more data i just go to analytics.google.com and if your client wants to you can invite them to a google analytics account so you can do that by going to google analytics Analytics, then go into the settings over here and then go to account user management and then you can add them uh, on their Gmail uh, to also give them access to the whole Google Analytics account of that website right because one website can have different users inside of Google Analytics okay so this is actually all you need to know for this step a little bit complicated i think this is the most complicated step but this is really nice because right now your clients and you can see the data inside of the wordpress dashboard the next step is the site icon uh, back in the day this was called the fav icon so if you want to research information on that it's called fav so f a v but right now it's called site icon and that is that little icon that you can see in all of the tabs over here so let's just set this up for this website right now you can do that by go to appearance and then click on customize and then you need to search for a tab called site identity if you have a different theme then sometimes it's hidden in some of the tabs over here sometimes it's inside of the header or inside of the style so you need to click on a few tabs to find the site identity then then scroll down and you can see the site icon over here so you can now scroll down and then select the site icon for the site icon make sure that it's not white because it's gonna be on a white or almost white background in most cases and you also want to make sure that there is enough spacing on the left and on the right otherwise you will have problems with the cropping right so if you just drag this in like this you can see a preview over here click on select and you can see that this is perfect because right now there's enough space on top uh, and on the bottom so this looks perfect so if you click on skip cropping and click on publish click on the x and there it changed right you saw it it's changed from the wordpress icon to now my site icon so this is for the whole website and now we're done with this step 
Okay, so the next step is to add users for your clients because most clients want to be able to log in themselves and make simple changes to the text and to the images, but you don't want them to change everything about the website. So WordPress has a great system for this and that is called user roles. Elementor also uses those user roles, which I'm gonna explain in the next step. But in this step, I'm gonna show you how you can properly create a user for your client because you should never share your own login details just for safety uh, reasons. So if you go to user users over here this is uh, my actual client website you can click on add new over here and here you can add a user for your client you can just put in a front name it doesn't really matter it doesn't have to be a very difficult name and you need to put in their email because they will get an email from WordPress when you add them as a user but also if they want to change their password so you only need to fill in the username and the email then you can scroll down you can skip all of this make sure that this is checked and then put them on the editor role and that is one role below uh, the admin role which is the highest but i have to say that sometimes your client wants full access to the whole website and then you can add them as an admin but i would say for most clients just give them the editor role because you don't want your clients to touch things that they shouldn't touch right maybe uh, they are very curious and they're going to change a few settings over here because because they think uh, that things could be better so i always recommend that you start out with the editor role and only make them an admin if they really ask for it because at the end of the day it's their website right so just click on add a new user and then they will get an email so that's all you need to know for this step let's go to the next step the next step is to set up elementor user roles and this is very important because elementor doesn't know that we have just created a new user inside of wordpress elementor cannot read everything in wordpress right so you need to tell elementor that you want to give the editor role limited access to all of the elementor features so if you go to elementor if you have elementor pro you can go to the role manager and if you don't have Elementor Pro, then this option is not available. That's why I always recommend that people uh, use Elementor Pro. If you're still using Elementor for free for your client websites, you can watch my video about Elementor Pro and I think that you will be convinced that Elementor Pro is the right fit for your web design business. But this is the feature that I talked about. You can click the editor open and then I would check this box, which is access to edit content only. And with this feature, you tell Elementor that all the editors can now only access the limited version of Elementor Pro. If you check this box, then they will not be able to ever see the Elementor editor. Uh, sometimes you want that with clients, but in my experience, this is the best option uh, for most clients. So, so if you click save changes and you log into a website with the editor role, you will see that there is limited access over here that the editor already doesn't have all the features that the admin has. But also if you go to the pages, and this is the most important part, and you click on edit with Elementor as an editor, right? So I've now created an editor account for myself. That's why I can see this. So I have two accounts on this website. As you can see, there are not a lot of options over here to drag in new elements. Actually, I cannot drag a new element in. As you can see right here, I cannot drag this button. It's impossible, but I can edit a few simple things. So there's only one tab over here for your client. So in this way, they can't mess up the design. They don't even see all the columns and everything. It's just a limited version. And the only thing that they can do, for example, is change the icon, is change the text, but they cannot change margin, paddings, add a new elements. So that is a feature that I recommend you use when you're working with clients. Uh, so that's it for this step okay and then the next step is a very interesting one uh, I actually found this one myself and it's called VP admin UI uh, customize so if you go to the plugins and you click on add new and you search for this plugin WP admin UI customize you can see this plugin if you click on it it will say this plugin has not been tested with your current version I use it on all of my website and this is because this developer actually started a new plugin but I think this plugin is actually much better than his newer version which I also tested and it's still still works absolutely fine and it also has very good ratings as you as you can see four and a half stars so what this allows you is to limit what your client can see inside of WordPress because right now my client can see all of these things so for example the templates but let's say that I only want my my client to be able to see the pages and maybe not even the comments and the media right or even exact metrics report maybe you want to only give him a preview on the dashboard and also as you can see on this website this top um, admin bar only only has one button. I've changed that with that plugin, right? So you can make it really clean for your clients. So let me show you what I mean. If you go to the plugin and then click on this first option, um, 
you need to select what role you want to edit. It's a little bit um, uh, uh, clunky, I would say. It's not a perfect plugin, but it works. Uh, but the technique is very good. So if you uh, uh, check this box and then click on save, then you can go to the sidebar over here. So now we're editing the sidebar of all the uh, people that have an editor account within this WordPress website. So here you can see all the things that a normal actually admin user sees. So plugin is not perfect, but you can see right now that my client website, for example, has this templates option where they can go to the theme builder. But if you don't want your client to edit the menu, for example, in the footer, you can just turn this whole thing uh, off. So if you go back and you search for templates, you can see that is this one because it's the Elementor templates. You can scroll down, you can click on remove, and then if you scroll down, click on save, go back to your client account, then click on refresh, you can see that now that option is gone. So you can also do that for the tools. Let's go back, let's just delete the tools over here. Remove, maybe we also wanna delete the comments. Let's scroll up, where are the comments? Over here, click on remove. Scroll down, click on save, go to your client's accounts to check it, click on refresh. And here you can see that we now only have a few options that my client would need. You can also do this for the admin bar, which I actually already did. So in this way, it's not very hard for your clients because for most clients, it's just too technical. You wanna make it as easy as possible. So I think this is an excellent plugin to make the experience for your clients better. Okay, and then this next step is the explainer video. What I always do when the uh, client needs to fill their own content is that I make an explainer video on how to use the website because still we've made it much easier and nicer for your client, but for most clients, it's still a little bit hard. So what I always do is I just record my screen, not with the camera like, like this and a, and a microphone, but just my laptop. I put on my, my screen flow or my um, QuickTime. And on Windows, there's a great tool called Loom that's actually free i will put a link in the description uh, where you can record your screen and your microphone at the same time but that is something that your client will really appreciate i've done it with almost all of my projects and i just tell my client like hey if you log into your account you can change the basic things of your website over here just go to pages and i just exactly tell them where to click uh, in the same way as i'm doing it right now for you but then much more basic without a microphone and uh well actually i'm using an external microphone right now but of course I'm using the microphone then in my in my laptop but not with a camera just a very simple video maybe just take your iPhone and record it like this make it super easy and give your client a little bit of confidence that they can make the simple changes to their website how they can add portfolio items how they can add blog posts and where they can see the analytics right so this is just something that I always do and your clients will love this because they will not feel lost and this is very important because if your client has a nice experience with the, in the last few weeks that they work with you, they are gonna tell other people about you. So make sure that you don't forget them after the website is done. Tell them what they can do with it and they will be very happy with you. So here you can see a few of those videos where I show my client what I did or how they can use the website. I need to blur a few titles over here, but I just make a video like this. I put it on YouTube and I send them an unlisted YouTube link. So when you upload a video like this, uh, you can put that video on unlisted. And that means that only the people who have that link can uh, watch that video. So your video will not be live on YouTube. It's just for you and your client to watch that video. And then the last step, which is step number eight, and that is to use a tool like Manage WP. Something like this is super useful for your client's websites because if you have a lot of websites, that means that you also need to update a lot of plugins. I actually charge my clients for this. And if you wanna know how I do that, then you should check out my Elementor Pro video because that is where I explain that. But I will show you quickly what I do with this. You can sign up for Manage WP for free. And here I just connect all the accounts of my clients so for example this is the yoga website that you just saw on YouTube uh, and as you can see right now there are four plugins that that needs to be updated so if I click on update all and I click on update then these four plugins will start updating it's just actually two clicks for one website so that is pretty nice and again I charge my clients for this so how you do that is you make an account on manage WP and that's just very easy to do just your email and a password and then what you need to do on your client website is download a plugin called Holds manage WP and I have installed this already because I actually use this on this website and then if you go to your installed plugins you scroll down 
you can see that there's a button over here that's called connection management. When you click it, there's a connection key. If you copy that connection key, you can go to your Manage WP and you can add a new website over here. So if you add a new website, you can type in the link. So for example, and then you can click on use a connection key instead. And if you paste that key over here, then this uh, website will be connected to your Manage WP. And here you can have a simple overview of all of your clients' websites. And what's great about this tool, even if you want it, you can update all of your client plugins from this button over here with just one click. How amazing is that? You can install backups. So as you can see, I've installed 20 websites uh, via the Manage WP backups. So that's also a safe way. If you guys want me to make a separate video about this, uh, because this is a very big system, so please let me know if you want me to make a separate video about this. So this is actually all I do to make the experience for my client as nice as possible. So if you have any questions, then you can leave them down below. So I hope that you found this video valuable if you did then please leave a like because that is very good for the YouTube algorithm and if you want to learn more about how to start your own web design business then you should check out my channel because I have a lot of videos about this and then uh, again I hope to see you in the next video